talked about statements. In this video, we'll learn how to break apart statements into their individual components. Now, remember, a statement is any declarative sentence which is either true or false. A statement is atomic if it cannot be divided into smaller statements. Otherwise, it is called molecular. Now, the naming scheme here is intentionally comparable to the field of chemistry. You can think of atomic statements as the building blocks that make up the more complex molecular statements. Let's take a look at some examples. These are statements, in fact, atomic statements. Telephone numbers in the USA have 10 digits. The moon is made of cheese. 42 is a perfect square. Every even number greater than two can be expressed as the sum of two primes. Three plus seven equals 12. And these are not statements. Would you like some cake? That's a question, not a statement, not a sentence. The sum of two squares. <laughs> That's not a complete sentence. One plus three plus five plus seven plus so on plus two and plus one. Go to your room. Three plus X equals 12. The reason the sentence three plus X equals 12 is not a statement is because it contains a value X that is not known. It could be that X is a variable. Depending on what X is, the statement is either true or false, but right now it is neither one definitive, definitively. One way to make the sentence into a statement is to specify the value of x in some way. This could be done by specifying a specific substitution, for example, 3 plus x equals 12, where x equals 9. Which is a true statement. Or you could capture the free variable by quantifying over it, as in three plus X equals 12 for all values of X, which is false. Or in the example, three, X, three plus X equals 12 for some value of X, which is a true statement. We will discuss quantifiers in more detail in future videos. You can build more complicated molecular statements out of simpler ones using logical connectives. For example, this is a molecular statement. If I said three plus seven equals 12, or three plus seven equals 11. Note that we can break this down into two smaller statements. The two shorter statements are connected by this or here. In this course, we will consider five connectives. The first one is the connective and. Sam is a man and Chris is a woman. The and is used to combine two atomic statements to make a molecular statement. The second connective is or. Sam is a man or Chris is a woman. The third connective is if, then. If Sam is a man, then Chris is a woman. The fourth connective is if and only if. Sam is a man, if and only if, Chris is a woman. The last connective is not. Sam is not a man. Hey everyone, real quick, I just wanna mention that this video is a part of a whole course that I made. You can find a link to this entire course in the description below and make sure to click on that subscribe button. The first four connectives here are called binary connectives because they connect two statements, binary two. While the last connective, not, is an example of a unary connective since it applies to a single statement and doesn't combine multiple smaller statements. These molecular statements are of course still statements, so they must either be true or false. The absolute key observation here is that which truth value the molecular statement achieves 
is completely determined by the type of connective, logical connectives, and the truth values of the atomic parts. We do not need to know what the parts actually say, only whether those parts are true or false, in order to determine the overall molecular statement as being true or false. So to analyze these logical connectives, it is enough to consider propositional variables, sometimes called sentential variables. And these are basically capital letters in the middle of the alphabet, like capital P or capital Q or capital R, capital S, that make it easy to simplify complex statements with lots of ands and ors and if-thens. This about this is like algebra when you were first introduced to X. These capital letters, which, by the way, let me give you all a um, an example of what these look like. P, Q, R, that's not an R, R, S here. These capital work, letters work very similar, similarly, except instead of numbers, they are representing the truth value of a certain statement, and the value of the variable is either true or false. We also have symbols for the logical connectives. Let me show you what those look like. Here we have P with an upper arrow here, Q, is read P and Q and called a conjunction. P with the upside down symbol here, Q is read P or Q and called a disjunction. P arrow Q is read if P then Q and called an implica implication or conditional. We'll use the word implication in this course. P arrows in both directions, Q is read P if and only if Q and called a biconditional. Not P with a little thing in the, in the front of the P is read not P and called a negation. Now, the truth value of a statement is determined by the truth value or values of its part or parts, depending on the connectives. So let's take a look. P and Q is true when both P and Q are true. P or Q is true when P or Q are or both are true. That's really important. So if I said, please give me a sandwich or please give me a burger and you give me a sandwich and a burger, that statement that I, uh, that um, statement would be satisfied. It would still be true. It's still, it's still okay that both were met. That still satisfies the um, disjunction. P implies Q is true when P is false or Q is true or both. That one we'll discuss later on in the course a little bit more in detail. P if and only if Q is true when P and Q are both true or both false simultaneously. Not P is true when P is false. Note that for us, or is the inclusive or and not the sometimes used exclusive or, meaning that P or Q is in fact true even if both P and Q are true. As for the other connectives, and behaves the same way as you would expect, as does negation. The biconditional, if and only if, might seem a little strange, but you should think of this as saying the two parts of the statements are equivalent and that they always have the same truth value. This leaves only the conditional. If P, then Q, which has a slightly different meaning in mathematics than it does in ordinary usage. However, implications are so common and useful in mathematics that we must develop fluency with their use, and as such, they deserve their own video, which we'll be discussing next. I'll see you then.